What's up, guys? Me Time Gamer here. Finally, another episode. I'm not skipping a week this time around. Uh, yeah, I feel like recording another one. So, episode 16 of the Me Time Gamer podcast. How's it going, guys? Jonathan here, Me Time Gamer. John, whatever you want to call me. I'm here today for another podcast, like I've already mentioned before. So, it's awkward when you're trying to start off the podcast. That's the, the most difficult part of doing it. Is just starting a podcast when you're talking to yourself. It's always more difficult that way. So, uh, without further ado, let's get with the program. So, today we got more news. I don't have any kickstarting it today. So, we won't have any uh, projects to promote. Of course, if... um, I'm a, uh, let, let, let's do some of the um, some of the social thing right now. So, of course, if you want to watch, uh, if you're listening to the audio audio version of the podcast, which uh, you can find everywhere on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, Google Play, and all that stuff, you can also watch the video format at youtubecom gamer which I will reference a couple of times during the podcast. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, welcome, of course. And of course, if you're watching the video of, uh, format, of course, you can find the podcast everywhere where I mentioned uh, uh, previously to find on your uh, your best uh, where, wherever you listen to your podcast. And uh, if or you also can, you can also find it at my website at metimegamer.com where I usually post the podcast. Uh, well, I need to post it there if you guys want it on the podcast feed. So you can definitely check it out there. And yeah, so let's move on to usually we'll have a couple of news article. I got out about four news article. Uh, before that, I'll talk about a bit what I've been doing for the last week on video game style and stuff like that. And then it's going to be a short episode. We'll just keep going from there and end the episode after that. So um, buckle in. It's going to be a short ride this time around. Not like last week. Last week what, uh, was a bit of a longer episode last week. So let's start off with what I've been playing lately. So I've been playing Outlast still. I'm hoping to finish it sometime this week or next week. It'd be really fun to do. I'm almost at the end there. It's getting a bit uh, uh, intense there at the end. A lot, a lot of um, sorry for that beep there. I'm in my basement. <laughs> uh, a lot of cool scares in Outlast, but mostly the game I've been playing while I've been streaming uh, on Twitch, uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Me Time Gamer, of course. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Watch Dogs too. I, I finished the story mission finally. That was a hell of a last mission there. Uh, a little spoiler alert. So if you want to hear a bit of a spoiler for the ending. Uh, probably in time to cut out for a minute or so. Uh, the ending, basically what's cool about the ending is you play as Wrench and Satara before you go into Marcus, before doing the final part of the mission, which is pretty cool. At least now you get a sense of the whole team uh, environment and all that, and they all have their different kind of attitude towards a situation. Like, uh, like Satara's doesn't that... Satara is, well, anyway, no, I don't know why I'm explaining that. The, the, the coolest part was playing as Wrench. Wrench just has this, like, fucking grenade launcher, and you just fucking crash into the warehouse you're trying to go to shut it down with the grenade launcher. That was pretty fun. And besides that, I haven't played any, uh, any other games, really, not to my memory. Yeah, that's pretty much the only game. Oh, no, I played uh, last week. I talked about um, my kickstarting of last week was Adam RPG, and I did find the demo for it. There was a demo you... You know, if you guys, if you listen to last week's episode that I talked about it, and I, uh, uh, while I was reading, I was like, oh, look, there's a demo, and I actually played it. It's a pretty fun demo. Definitely, guys, go check out the demo if you want to try it out. It's still getting, you can still crowdfund, you can still fund it right now. I think there's about 15 days left still at this point. So definitely go check it out on Kickstarter. Of course, go check out the previous uh, podcast episode, uh, either on YouTube or on the website there if, to find the link for that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing. So we will jump right into the news. All right, so it's not a lot of news. There's a couple of interesting articles this week. But the first one I want to talk about is uh, this one. I'm reading an article from uh, IGN. This is from Cassie DeFreitas. Sorry if I didn't read your name properly. So basically it talks about Alan Wake. If So if you guys have been looking at the news... Uh, there was a bit of a, a thing going on with Alan Wake where, uh, well, some of, some of you guys or girls uh, might have seen that uh, Alan Wake was on special 90% off. I actually bought the entire, like, Alan Wake and Alan Wake American Nightmare Mare was like $4 altogether, and I, I bought both of them for the PC on Steam, so that's pretty fun. So let's get into the story of why Alan Wake was on special. So basically the title of the article is Alan Wake to be removed from stores because expiring license. So the story, Cassie writes this in our article there. Uh, Alan Wake is potentially in its last days because of expiring music licenses. 
To give players a chance to get the game before it's pulled, developer Remedy announced on Twitter that Alan Wake was currently 90% off on Steam for the last 48 hour it's available. The Alan Wake Sunset Sale pricing Alan Wake $3 will be May 13, blah blah blah, that's the date. Uh, though the expired music license won't affect the side story Alan Wake's American Nightmare, uh, it will still be offered at a discount as, le- as, well along, as well along with all DLC. That's a weird sentence. And Remedy has stressed repeatedly on Twitter that players who already own Alan Wake will remain the ability to play it well after it's discontinued. Well, I hope so. If you're selling the game 40, two days before you fucking sell it, <laughs> you would think that you, you would keep it more than two days. Uh, Thomas Pua, Remedy Head Communication, pointed out that it's not just one song causing all of the grief. Every track license is inspiring, including the songs specially curated for episode endings, like David Bowie's Space Odyssey and songs from the in-game fictional band Old Gods of Ashgard performed by a poet of the fall. Because the licensed soundtrack is such an integral part of Alan Wake, patch, patching it out just isn't a simple solution. Makes sense. Instead, Remini is looking into re-licensing the music, but a known long process would take. So that's that's the crux of it. Unfortunately, Alan Wake, I, I know Alan Wake, uh, it's not a game I've played personally myself, but I know that it's a very popular game that has been played a lot in the past by a lot of people. Uh, it's a popular game, and I can't, I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to uh, check it out pretty pretty soon to see what that's all about. But hey, hopefully they'll be able to find all the music license back for it. And if not, if hopefully you guys were able to buy it during the little sale they had there on uh, Steam. So on to the next article of news we have here. So the next one we have here is a bit more uh, a bit more weird. This is, uh, well, not weird. Uh, so this is from Kutaku, but it's written by Luke Plunkett. Hopefully I'm saying this that name again. Uh, so basically the title is Square Enix Splits with Hitman Creator IO Interactive. So uh, so a bit some the article here says in 2009, Square Enix took control of Hitman developers IO Interactive. Today, the two companies part, way, part ways. Square initially assumed ownership of IO when it bought IADOS Interactive, IO's parent company. But in a, in a statement released today, the Japanese publisher says to maximize player satisfaction as well as market potential going forward, they have regrettably decided to withdraw from the business of, business of IO Interactive. As a result, this company started discussion with potential new investors and currently in negotiation to security investments. This investment, Square stated statement adds, uh, whilst there can be no guarantees that the negotiation will con- be concluded successfully, they are being ex- explored since they, this is in the best interest of our shareholders, the studio, and the industry as a whole. Okay, and the article continues. It is unclear what this means exactly for the Danish studio and its staff, who, aside from Hitman, have also been responsible for Kane and Lynch and the criminally underrated mini mini ninjas. Though it certainly suggests that Square is in the process of entertaining offers for the sale of IO. It also doesn't explain what happened to the Hitman IP once the two companies split, or what what sorry for what the future holds for Hitman's new seasonal release model. Um, and yes, so that's basically the crux of the article. Uh, so yeah, that's a bit weird to see because Hitman apparently was, uh, the Hitman, the way their new formula is for the new Hitman they released last year, the year before, the way they released episode and it's a season based thing. Uh, it's actually co- quite surprising that they would actually just let go IO Interactive. Uh, a lot of, a lot of the news I saw on Twitter and all that, a lot of people was like, is this the end of, uh, Hitman and all that? For me personally, the way I, I find it kind of weird because it doesn't say like they're closing down IO Interactive, but of course, if nobody buys the company or if the, if the, uh, cause I'm assuming that there's a head of studio can, can try to find some way to, uh, buy the company for, for himself to make it an independent company again, uh, would be able to, to get Hitman back and going. But, uh, I would assume that, uh, the way, the way that, um, Hitman went last year, the year before, that they'll be able to probably get somebody to invest in the company and make IO Interactive uh, active, IO Interactive, interactive, active again, to be able to make season two of uh, Hitman and ho- hopefully future games. So best luck, lo- best of luck to everybody over there at IO Interactive, and hopefully we'll see more of Hitman because that was a very good game. I p- only played the demo, but most people I saw playing the season, the season type game, really enjoyed the game itself. So that's that's it for that so 
on to the next little piece of news. So this is from the Ubisoft blog. Actually, the last two article of news are from Ubisoft. But the first one is uh, for Ghost Recon Wildlands. So Wildland, uh, Ghost Recon, go, sorry, let me take my time here. Ghost Recon Wildlands, Fallen, there's a Fallen Ghost expansion, unleashes new missions and a new enemy. So the blog post from Ubisoft goes as follow. Fallen Ghost, the second major expansion for Ghost Recon Wildlands, is set to arrive for season pass holder on May 30th. This time, the ghosts are on the back foot after a helicopter crash leaves them stranded on their way to on the way to a mission. Sorry about that. Um, uh, get stranded on their way to a mission. Meanwhile, a, bru- a brutal new special unit is on their trail, tasked with putting the ghosts out of action for good. Uh, Fallen Ghost is a direct continuation of Ghost Recon Wildlands' main story. Uh, following the fall of Santa Blanca's cartel, the Unidad military forces force is having a hard time maintaining stability, cause a, causing a fictionalized Bolivia to descend into civil war. Of course, they have to put fictionalized Bolivia because I don't know if you guys. A little side note here: this is not the article anymore. Um, the the president of Bolivia, or communication agent from Bolivia, actually uh, put a uh, what do you call those again? Um, not a lawsuit, not a a cease and desist to Ubisoft to stop using Bolivia as a name for the game because they were they was tarnishing the name of Bolivia because they were they were saying the game portrays uh, drug drugs drug stuff like that and drug stuff like that's pretty, uh, a better way of saying it. There, uh, the game explores a lot of the the drug cartels and stuff like that. And uh, I said the same thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll get this, guys. Give me a minute here. I'm a bit tired today. Um, yeah, so they were saying like it was it was not painting a good picture for um, for uh, for Bolivia, but a lot of this is what I've I've heard other uh, game journalists say, like or uh, people that are know well other countries' economic uh, uh, way they are or whatever. Sorry, that's not the. Right. I don't know the way I want to explain it here. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, yeah, so they were, but actually Bolivia is actually known for being very high, uh, not very high on drugs, of course, but I mean like um, uh, be, being like in, highly involved and corrupt into the drug stuff. So uh, they did. Ubisoft didn't change anything. They just said, "Well, sorry, you failed that way, and we'll but we'll keep the name Bolivia anyway in there." So uh, yeah, so uh, we'll keep going in the article uh, in a bit. In a bit to restore order, they issue a call to arms. Anyone willing to help rebuild the country is welcome to join. This attracts the attention of rough, of rough sorts, disgraced special forces squads, ex-cartel members, mercenaries, criminal from the right, from right across South America, all after a chance to grab some of the Santa Blanca's old infrastructure for their own gain. As such, a new faction is born, the Los, the Los Extranjeros, the foreigners. Unlike the ban foreigner, uh, the Los Extranjeros aren't particularly interested in finding out what love is. Okay, that's a good that's a good joke. Good good good, good job, Ubisoft. That's a, that was a good one. Uh, these fellow are far more interested in following Unidad's call to take down any American agent still hold hold up in Bolivian soil. All right. Uh, with this in mind, the ghosts are sent on one final mission, pack up the remaining U.S. citizens and get them out of the country. But when their helicopter is shot down and en route, they find themselves stuck in the middle of a jungle without external support. And will, and with the well-equipped and heavily armed Los Extraños closing in, oh how the tables have turned, the hunters are now the hunted. Then it keeps going with all the features. You guys can definitely go check out the Ubisoft blog on this. So that's cool, a new... A uh, new expansion to uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, Wildlands, I only played the... Unfortunately, I only had the chance to play the beta of Wildlands, which was actually pretty fun when I played it. Uh, the online thing was pretty cool. The whole squad thing when you're not playing online was a pretty good way of, of letting you experience the game with like uh, calculated headshots, uh, calling your team to help you out, and stuff like that. The game the game looked pretty, pretty fucking interesting. I just didn't have a chance to to buy it for myself but uh so it's, it's it was with the was released on march 7th so hopefully hopefully this is a big pack for uh wildlands to uh to keep playing sorry i'm a bit off today guys i know this might be uh bad but i still want to do a podcast for you guys so we'll keep we'll keep going yeah so 
new expansion for Wildlands. Uh, definitely go check that game out uh, if you have a chance. I, th I think you can still play um, on PS4. You can play like the first if you have PS Plus, which I don't understand. If you don't have PS Plus, uh, it's kind of weird because uh, most game, mo most online games, you need them now. So anyway, I'm I'm getting sidetracked here. Yeah, if you, I think they offer the first hour, or you play for one hour free with their free trial or whatever for an hour. So you can definitely go try that out for sure. So we'll move on. Another Ubisoft news, and this is the last little piece of news we have, and this is actually uh, fr uh, fresh off the press here. Uh, this is a article by Polygon, uh, written by Samid Sakar. So sorry again if I didn't read your name right. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so this is about Far Cry 5: The Crew 2 announced coming in the next year. So the article go as follow goes as follow. Uh, Far Cry 5 is in development and is scheduled to be released before April 2018, publisher Ubisoft announced today. It is one of the four games from major Ubisoft franchise that are slated to launch in the company's 2017-2018 fiscal year, which ends March 31st, 2018. The other, th the other three titles are in Assassin's Creed, of course, like I talked about last week. Uh, there's also South Park, The Fractured But Whole, and The Crew 2. Did the crew get enough notori- uh, the, 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 Did far- Did fucking- f The crew to get enough sales to- To, like, uh, to merit uh, number two? I have no clue. I didn't- I didn't see a lot of people, like, gushing over the crew, the first one. The story wasn't that good. The fucking- The mechanic- When I played the, dem the, the beta version of it, I didn't like the mechanics of the game that well. I didn't feel like the cars handled uh, particularly well. Like, when you compare, like, to Watch Dogs 2, the car handling in Watch Dogs 2 is actually pretty good. And the, the crew, for some reason, feels completely different. So it feels like the car doesn't handle at all. It doesn't want to turn half the time. It's, well, that that was the beta version. So, of course, I'm criticizing something that wasn't done. But uh, I, heard, I heard the same critics when people were re reviewing the game. And then it got, like, I think it got, like, six or sevens, like, or something like that, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so, uh, and then the sentence finishes by, the company says today it's earning, okay. Uh, blah, 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 so, yeah. So, yeah, Far Cry 5. So, the last game they released before that was Far Cry Primal, which got a lot of good vibes from it, because it was released so close to Far Cry 4. Not so close, it was a year, or year and a half, two years after. And this, uh, so that was, uh, what the hell, where the hell does it say it? So I'm just trying to find... Yeah, Far Cry Primal was released last year. The beginning of last year, if I remember. Yeah, I think so. Let me check, let me check. 2000. Yeah, February February 2016, when Far Cry 4 was 2014. Yeah, so I didn't get a chance to play Far Cry Primal. I actually have it here. I borrowed it from, I borrowed it from my brother. And uh, I can't wait to check. I actually love. I very. I enjoy a lot. Far Cry this is one of those series where, uh, sort of like what happened when I started playing Fallout Three. Uh, Far Cry. I never played Far Cry One or Two, but when Far Cry Three came out, I started playing and I really enjoyed the mechanics, the open world. And it, it it's hard for me to say no at an open world game that lets me do like anything I want. <laughs> uh, that's it's one of those feelings I like when I start playing an open world game. I like the being overwhelmed by the game sometimes it's quite weird because I, I like the feeling of oh my god i can do anything i want so just like go ahead first or then or then the ocd kicks in and it's like oh i have to clear the map i have to st start up i have to start top left and finish uh, bottom right and clear everything in the past usually that's what i do when i play the far cry series i go open up all the towers that i can then pick up everything i can and then i start doing the missions and all those things so I can't wait to try out Far Cry 5. They do have a little, a little like tidbit about it that report uh, the in the article there from Polygon. It states here that uh, reports have suggested that the game will be set in American West and specifically in Montana. Okay, uh, early this month, uh, the Grand Falls, Montana tribute reported that the company with offices in Paris sent a crew to a crew to a church near. Poplar, Montana, to film footage that will be used to promote an unnamed video game. The game is scheduled to be released in September, the report says. September this year? Will they announce a fucking Far Cry 5 and release it September this year? May well, 
if no, if the article at the top says uh, that uh, Ubisoft publisher says no later than April 2018, September would make sense. Like if they've been working on it since Far Cry 4, if it's a different internal team that that are working on it, would make sense. And the uh, the article, uh, there's an update here. I don't think uh, that that doesn't matter too. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the rest doesn't matter to what we're what we're talking about here. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. A little new Far Cry. It's one of those series that are very interesting to play. Um, can't wait to try it. Primal. That's one of the games. Like I saw a lot of people suggesting when you play it, like turn off uh, mission tracking and the ma- the mini map, so you get more of that primal feeling when you're playing the game, which I might do when I'm when I'm gonna start playing. So definitely gonna check that out. And that is that that is it for the news this week. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this week's episode 16 of the Me Time Gamer Podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Like I said at the beginning, it's a bit shorter than the rest. It's just I didn't have a lot of things to talk about. And honestly, I'm tired, so I probably I jibber-jabbered a lot more. Uh, some of my sentences there were a bit uh, mash up there, and it did, probably didn't make as much sense as I wanted them to make. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, you can uh, if you enjoyed the video format of it, definitely hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're on iTunes or anywhere. Please rate and review the the podcast. Would really appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely check it out everywhere. Uh, you guys feel so if you feel compelled to do so. And uh, yeah, you can follow me everywhere. Me time grammar Twitter, Twitch, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram. And on youtube.com forward slash me time game where I post a new video every day of the week, Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. You can also check me out uh, usually during the week. I will stream usually at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. I usually play for an hour or so, so you guys can uh, come chat, say hi, or whatever. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this week's episode. Sorry for the mumbling and stuff like that. Hopefully, guys, it's still enjoyable. And I will be back uh, tomorrow with another video, of course, but I'll still. And, uh, but of course I will be back next week with another podcast so hopefully hopefully next week and I don't no promises some weeks I don't feel like it or there's not enough news to talk I'm not just gonna talk for 10 minutes so, okay that's that's the end of the episode <laughs> so anyway thank you so much guys for listening and watching and I will see you in the next podcast keep on keeping on